Sports Card Podcast, where we tackle the hobby's hottest topics in depth to help you navigate the sports card landscape and enjoy the hobby we all love. Here's your host, John Newman. All right, welcome to another edition of Hobby Quick Hits. Today's episode is going to be pertaining to just some post national thoughts. Just kind of the, the really wrap it up. Really wrap it up. I haven't done that uh, on this show, I, I, and even on on our big show, Sports Car Nation, I, I talk more about what I did than than my thoughts. So I'm going to use this shorter show, kind of the kind of things I saw, observed, where I think we're at uh, in the hobby and that that sort of thing. So, but before we get to that, let's hear from our great sponsor, Mojo Breaks. Hey folks, wanted to tell you about the best place to get some of your sealed sports card wax products. Great selection and some of the lowest prices on the web. MojoBreakShop.com is that place. Whether it's a box or a whole case, they're your guys. And they ship around the world right to your door. The Mojo Break name is one of the most trusted in the hobby. From sports cards to Pokemon, their selection can't be beat. They offer daily deals and pre-orders. Who won first place at this year's Tops Rip Party? None other than Mojo Break. Their prices are already great, but here's a way to save even more money. Use the code QUICKHITS, that's Q-U-I-C-K-H-I-T-S, for 10% off anything on MojoBreakShop.com. They also have a full-service card shop in Santa Clara, California. So if you're in the area, stop by. They're open seven days a week, so check them out at mojobreakshop.com. All right, let's talk about the 41st National in Chicago. Hopefully uh, you got to go like I did. Uh, very, very busy. The National said, without releasing actual figures, said it was the second most attended National. First day was the most attended ever uh, on day one, Wednesday. And uh, it was very busy. Uh, I will say this as someone who was you know, likes to buy some cards at shows when they're, when I'm not there as a dealer. Uh, it was actually very hard, especially on Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, to really get uh, some showcase time, right, in front of a showcase. You sort of had to wait your turn, or a lot of times if you saw an opening, you kind of had to quickly fill that spot. Uh, I like to look through, you know, dollar boxes, $5 boxes, $10 boxes, that space was at a premium. It was hard uh, to get uh, into those areas. I mean, uh, I went to the singles club, uh, uh, which is the way they have that set up is, is really ideal so that you don't really have to fight too many people uh, off there. That's, a, that's a, a great opportunity, especially at a dollar a card. Um, but uh, it was hard to, to navigate, it, you know, as a buyer to in front of certain cases. You had to sort of wait your turn, and there's nothing wrong with that. I'm not complaining, uh, but it was just that busy that sometimes you really, you almost felt like when you're waiting, you almost felt like you were eavesdropping uh, uh, watching someone else while you tried to, to get in there. But, uh, you know, if it was a case you definitely wanted to see, uh, you you know, I waited and uh, bided my time uh, as you're, you're required to do. But it was packed. It was packed. It was hot. You know, that's what happens, not complaining. Uh, you know, this was the first time I went for the whole week. Uh, my feet are still barking at me, saying uh, thanks for putting us in that predicament. But, uh, you know, it's a, a great time. And listen, it, it's a card show. It's it's so many layers to what the National really is, right? Obviously, it's the, the biggest card show of the year. I've coined it the Super Bowl uh, of the hobby. But it's also... A networking event, right? It's what event uh, each year is going to have the most people from the hobby attending it? It's the national. And so when you want to meet your friends and people you've met online, uh, many in many cases for the first time, maybe not the first time, the nationals become that place, right? And then we see all these events off the national, off-site, right? And I'm not talking about Cubs or, or White Sox. I'm talking about hobby events. Many of the uh, companies had private, uh, you know, VIP parties. I even noticed many of the new companies uh, did these, uh, you know, uh, private parties, which is a great way to 
uh, expose your company, invite folks that you want maybe to invest or be involved. Uh, it's a great networking uh, opportunity. Uh, I went to a couple. Um, I was invited to more, but, uh, you know, I'm, I'm getting old, old in my old age, so it's hard for me to uh, do everything, but I uh, tried to uh, make my attendance at, at a few. Another stat from the National, 47% of the tickets sold were people attending their first National. I knew that number was going to be high. I did not know that number was going to be that high. Think about that, 47%. That's almost half of the people in the building, just slightly half, less than half, where the, everyone was attending uh, their first national. I think that's a testament, folks, to uh, where the hobby is. Uh, a lot of new entrants, a lot of new blood, as they like to say, uh, new money, however you want to uh, phrase it. Uh, I, I think that's good. I think that's good. We need people in the hobby for the hobby to thrive and go forward. If, if if we were losing more people than we were gaining the hobby, you know, maybe some people would like that. Hey, uh, cost, you know, things will come down. I can just buy whatever I want. I, I, I get that. But if you really, really care about the hobby, you want it to thrive and survive. And, and we've seen in the past what can happen when a lot of people leave the hobby. We've seen this. This is not unprecedented so I, I don't wish for that I don't hope for that and I welcome uh, anyone new whether they're coming in uh, to quick flip or they're coming in for the long haul uh, we all can enjoy the hobby in different sort of ways but that 47 percent going back to that that number is a, a real indicative of where we are with the hobby still uh, strong will all of those 47 percent stay for the long haul no, let's let's be honest. That's that's that does and that doesn't happen in any hobby or any business, right? People leave, people change jobs, people you know quit jobs, people quit hobbies. Uh, but that's a very high number, and it's a very strong indicator of how strong the hobby is, even with some prices kind of correcting and 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 you know leveling off, uh, if you will. So the hobby uh, is still very strong. Some on-the-floor observations. Well, like everything else in the hobby blowing up, content creation has blown up exponentially uh, as well. Now, I will say this. I expected to see more uh, cameras on the floor of people, you know, live footage, shooting live. And there was some. Don't get me wrong. There was some. I expected to see a lot more. So I don't know if it was because of maybe the size of the building, maybe the... There was more, but it was spaced out well enough. But, uh, you know, as someone who went to the Dallas show a few months back, uh, there was cameras at every turn. I didn't feel that as much here uh, with the National. Uh, there was cameras and people filming, uh, but not, not as much as I kind of envisioned uh, prior to uh, attendance. But content creation uh, is, is alive and well, and, and a lot of new people entering uh, the arena. What else are we seeing a big influx of? Selling platforms, right? Uh, places to, to buy and list uh, cards, to do live breaks and auctions. Uh, and so now, that, uh, if you're entering the hobby now, you, you have multiple, multiple, multiple different platforms you can sell your inventory on. Plenty of avenues. And... Uh, uh, reminds me back in the day, you know, when, when there wasn't, you know, it was eBay and maybe a message board, AOL or Net54, that we, our options were, were limited. Now there's, there's no shortages of places to uh, sell and buy, break, buy in the breaks. And, and so, uh, you know, for those who are thinking about doing it full time, it's not easy. But you have more opportunities than you ever had uh, prior. Speaking of new people or young people, and just being young doesn't mean you're you're new. So I don't want to put those two together. But I see a lot of that. The demographic, I think, age twenty to thirty-five, I think, is probably the biggest represented uh, demographic I saw in Chicago, and I was pleasantly surprised at. That age demographic, I saw a lot of them buying and interested in vintage cards. 
Americans. And, and it's not the demographic you traditionally think uh, would be, you know, they would be more the shiny new, but I did, and, 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 and majority are, but I saw a lot of interest uh, towards vintage cards, which was good to see uh, someone who maybe wasn't around during that time uh, take an interest in the past of, of cards and of sports and research and learn about players and then obviously in turn buy uh, some cards uh, of those players. And uh, that was a nice surprise. Walking the floor, plenty of transactions going down. Plenty. Here's one of my, my most favorite things about this year's National. Lots of kids. I saw more kids in 2021 than I saw in 2019. That's, it's not even debatable. Um, and, and not just kids maybe being dragged with their mom or dad or anything like that. These were active kids, whether it was opening packs, uh, buying cards out of the showcases, looking through those dollar, five dollar, ten dollar boxes. Those kids were active in the hobby. I mean, if you know anything about me, you know that warms my heart and it's very important. Know, some will argue it's not as important as I make it out to be. Uh, you know, we can debate that for hours, but I was really glad to see uh, kids active in the hobby to that level on the grandest stage every year. Uh, it was really, really heartwarming to see that. And I saw a future. I saw one young man. I don't, I don't know anything about him. I'm going to guess on his age, probably 12, maybe 13 at, at, at tops uh, age. And uh, uh, I was looking at a showcase. He had some cards out. Uh, from the dealer that he was looking at, and uh, he made a purchase, a thousand dollars. So, young man, you know, making a thousand dollar transaction, and uh, you know, someone said, "Man, we, you know, the, how you look at it, right?" I thought it was great. The young man uh, looked at the card, you know, probably did a little haggling, uh, learning the art of the deal at a very young age. I think that's a skill that shouldn't be poo pooed. And uh, made a transaction. I think he bought two or three cards that equaled to the thousand dollars he offered. Dealer said yes, and boom, deal was made. And that young man got three uh, cards that uh, were very nice and that he wanted to obtain. And 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 I saw uh, deals along those lines. I saw some bigger ones uh, go down with some with adults. Uh, it was it was a lot of transactions going down and. Uh, the dealers I spoke to as a fellow dealer, you know, you ask, how's it going? Or I heard someone else ask them, how's it going? And I heard a lot of the best show uh, I've ever had kind of deal. And so I heard a lot of that. It was sort of a little different than what I heard in Dallas, where dealers were like not even looking at, uh, you know, people selling their cards on the other side of the table. Now that was going on. The other thing I saw a lot of were trade cash deals where... You know, it's a big, uh, a real big time expensive card, and the person wanting it says, Hey, I don't have enough cash to buy it, but will you take a cash card combo? Here's my cards if you want to, and I got this much cash I could put towards that. I saw a lot of those type deals, which those, those are great too. That's a transaction just the same. I saw a lot of just trades. Hey, you know, I want that one big card. Would you be interested in maybe three or four cards? for the one and I saw a lot of those deals uh, go down and that's just in, in walking around and in, in, in a limited uh, you know uh, litmus test if you will so a lot of transactions on that floor I heard a lot of dealers raving about how well uh, they were doing and so uh, you know that's a good sign that's a good sign for the hobby uh, irregardless of what you might hear in other places, uh, the hobby's doing okay. And it's okay for prices to come down, too. That's not always an indicator of hobby strength. That's just a, a correction in what people are willing to, to pay. The other thing I've seen the rise of is something that many years ago we frowned upon in the hobby, right? B back in my store days, you know, people would come in with, with some rookie cards. I, I live in a a baseball city and they're like hey i'm going to bring these to the game and try to get them autographed right and and it, in the hobby it was like don't get rookie cards signed right because it's 
it devalues the rookie card that's written on now, even though it's the actual player's autograph. If you were going to grade it, uh, they're going to they're going to you know penalize you for the writing on on the card and 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 downgrade the the card uh, condition. And so it was a thing in the hobby where we, I you know not just me, but it was like don't get rookie cards signed. We get you know get other second, third, fourth year cards signed. Uh, uh, that way you don't devalue the rookie card. That has changed. It is a big business now with graded, authenticated, signed rookies. Uh, I saw double-digit cases just dedicated to this genre. And the prices of those cards are, are through the roof. In other words, you know, a Brooks Robinson signed auto card, you know, easily four figures where, you know, Brooks Robinson you know, regular rookie grade, it's just not as high. And so that market has completely did a 180. There is a, a tremendous demand for graded signed rookie cards, especially of uh, vintage players, but not just relegated to vintage players, uh, in, in, even modern day. And there are showcases dedicated uh, to this, uh, I don't know if you want to call it phenomenon, but genre uh, now. And it's something I really never thought, uh, and again, I, I didn't realize this just now at the National, but going to the National and seeing how many showcases were dedicated to that sort of card is what surprised me. I, I knew it was a thing, but I didn't realize it, it was that big of a thing now. So rookie cards... You know, signed and, and slabbed, authentic auto, and uh, the card itself is, is, is a huge thing. I know uh, I, I met a person or two that told me that's what they do now. That's really their hobby. That's all they do now. They don't open cards. They got rid of a lot of stuff, and they just collect, you know, Hall of Fame rookie cards autographed by said player and slabbed. And it's uh, it's a uh, it's a huge thing, and something the younger version of me uh, in the hobby wouldn't have ever seen coming. But you know, we could say that, or I could say that about a lot of things, right? You know, when I when I was younger and opening packs, right? I didn't want my buddies opening my packs; those are mine. Get your own type of deal, right? And now we have breaking, right? Where people are opening your packs for you and sending you your what you get, right? What what they pull. And uh, if you would have told me that uh, back then, uh, that would be a thing. I would have thought you're crazy. So the hobby, uh, as as we all know, evolves, changes, most of it for the better. Not all, but most of it uh, for the better. So uh, it was a great national. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it just as well as we look forward to Atlantic City in less than a year now. All right. Thank you for listening to another episode of Hobby Quick Hits. Want to give out our social media, starting with our website, which is www.sportscarnationpodcast.com. Facebook, you can follow us at www.facebook.com forward slash sportscarnationpodcast forward slash. Twitter, we are at sportscardnat1, so it's sportscardnati1. Instagram, at Sports Card Nation Podcast, or you can email the show hobbyquickhits at gmail.com. Again, thanks for listening. We'll see you next week.